Indians who lived in these parts before the white men ever came here, they didn't have such a thing as pot. They ate deer meat, some kind of meat that they harvested from the local animals, deer, turkey. They would eat squirrel meat. But they never had such a thing as pie, which was a European invention. Pastry shell, baked in a crust, around a sort of fruit filling. And uh, when the first Frenchman came down from Montreal, searching for more beaver pelts, the Indians would torture them, reject their Catholic religion, and gnaw their fingers off one by one. First biting off their fingernails, then biting off their first joint, biting off their second joint, eating down their fingers, tearing off their ears, pouring hot pokers in their eyes. And after they tortured the Frenchmen to death, they tasted their sweet pastry crust, which the Frenchmen called a croissant. It was like a pie shell baked around a sort of fruit filling. And the Indians craved it and loved it, and they renounced their gods. They renounced their pagan gods, and they gladly lined up for a hunk of bread from the local priest. Their native gods were angry at them. They were the gods that had been worshipped before the white men came here, and they had noodly appendages and bodies made of meat. Bodies like round, flying meatballs with long, flying appendages and eyes sticking out. Baleful eyes that were horrible to see. The Indian men loved their pie. A pie that they tortured the Frenchmen to death. After they poked their eyes out with stickers, the Frenchmen were still alive. They tore humps of flesh from their bodies with burning tongs. Gnawing off their toes, ripping off their toenails one by one with their teeth. Gnawing down their toes, sticking them through their feet, jabbing them in their crotch, ripping them off their testicles, ripping off their hairs. They tortured the white men to death. Then they fell in love with the sweet taste of the pie and they renounced their pagan gods. And the pagan gods who've been sated with the bloodlust and sated with the blood sacrifice of the red man turned on the red man. So when, the, when he came with his hat in his hand to the big prime minister's door begging him for a piece of crust of bread, the flying noodly appendages just would strike him and they feel the flame break out on his body like a plague of boils. Pustulant ribbons would float out his arms, person with all kinds of disease and white man's pestilence. That's the way it was, it ain't never been no different. It was because they rejected their pagan gods. Those gods still live in the hollows of their hills. Some of them in hills of trees ain't never been cut. Hewlett's Landing here, this, this small settlement trees that all been cut. You go over yonder over at Hogback? You go over to Hogtown? Them trees ain't never been cut. It's a ring of 13 circle pines that ain't never been cut by human hands. Loggers came up in the 1930s. They dropped their logs, they dropped their chainsaws, and they ran. They heard the sounds in the hills. They heard the singing voices. Voices that no earthly voice could make. It was like a were ringing like a bell ringing in the mountains, and the 13 trees would never been cut. And who announced their pagan gods got the plague and they never lived? Only us. Only the few that you see here left among you. This fitting again. Only they can tell you the story and they ain't talking.